Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use GitLab, the GitLab workflow, with Android Studio or IntelliJ to do feature branches, and specifically in the case of having a conflict when you're trying to do your merge. So the previous video in this series is using a feature branch, just sort of plain feature branch with no conflicts, uh, and the next, this one's about using it with conflicts, and the next uh, demo will be about handling some special cases that are kind of left as an aside uh, currently. So the big picture is we're going to have a couple branches going on at once. We've got this sort of main branch here as shown on the big red line. That's my master branch. And I'm then going to come up with a couple separate branches. So I'm going to have one branch here for example. So I'm calling it the them branch. Imagine somebody else on your team does the work. And you have checked out your branch. So this green line here is where I've checked out a branch, I created my own feature branch from this code back here. And so at the same time as I was working on my feature branch, one of my teammates did a change and committed it to master, which is going to put me in conflict. Uh, their changes and my changes conflict. And so this demo will show how to go about resolving that conflict. So where we stand at the moment? Well, if we look inside of Android Studio, I'm kind of partway through the process. I am, uh, first thing to note is I am sitting on a branch called 42-mychange. And I can begin to sort of see the big picture if I come down here under version control, and it will show me the log. Uh, very similar to what is shown in GitLab, uh, this one's not maybe quite as smart in some ways. So where are we currently standing as well? I'm on this branch called 42mychange. And we can see that it's, I've got my local master, my local 42, my change. And then on the server, there's a origin slash master. And that's all there is at the moment. There's no 42, my change currently on the server based on how I'm doing my testing. You may have that branch depending on how you've come up with that, uh, uh, the branch. Now, the second, so I'm, it seems like my branch and the master are currently at the same point. And indeed, this check in here is where everything is currently sitting. They're all at the same level. But the changes is that I've got some local changes that have been done inside of this. So I clicked on local changes. This number fun.java has been changed. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to just quickly show what happened to it. Show diff. And here are the changes that have been made. Uh, so I added a min function. I added a guard condition to my uh, get average. Uh, down here I've refactored a while loop into a for each loop and I made a call at the very bottom to actually call my min function. So those are just some fairly sinful changes done to a plain old Java file. Okay, so importantly I realize that I'm switched onto this 42 uh, my change branch. Uh, see the previous video for how to do that if you haven't uh, done that before. What I now want to do is sort of get all of these changes back into the system. Um, so as my normal development would continue I would say well I've got these changes here I'm just I'm happy with the changes at the moment I want to do a commit and so I'll do a commit changes and I will uh, put in some message. So like, I'll put in me here at the front just to kind of keep it clear in my log. Of course, normally I wouldn't say that. And I'll say uh, refactor, co or sorry, maybe add min function and refactor loops to for each loops. I might put some extra details in here to describe exactly what I did and so forth, but I don't need it for the moment. Uh, now I'm going to choose to commit and push this. I might not need to commit and push, but it's sort of easy if I just always push at the moment. Now when I go to commit and push, the push dialog comes up. It's saying, well, I'm currently on this 42 my change branch, and it's going to go to origins, i.e. the remote servers, 42 uh, my change branch. And so I want to make sure that I'm kind of on the branch I think I am. Now is a great time to correct that if you're not. So I'll say push and it is now pushed successfully up to the server. Uh, if I go back to the log here, it'll show me that the master and the origin master are both sitting one behind me. And so I am, I'd say, one ahead of master. And here's my 42. And let's go back to GitLab online. I can hit F5 here, reload the page. And we can see that, uh, go right to the top here, I've got a few things going on at once. I've got me, well, I'm up here, here's my uh, min function that I've just put in here, 
and Master is one behind me, but there's a second thing that I didn't realize maybe it happened, I hadn't done a poll recently, is that my teammate had done this thing them, committed a few changes. And these, in fact, are going to generate some conflicts for me, as my uh, teammate was so nice to actually indicate in their check-in message. So this is going to be my issue. As I've got this change that they put in here, I've got to merge that into my changes before I can merge my code back into master. OK, so let's now figure out what's next. So I've pushed into master. I've shown where I am. I would normally maybe have a few other changes to do, so maybe I'll just do a quick little change here. I'll add in some, you know, more comments. And I'll save the file. Go back here. Now the file has changed. I'll do another commit. Commit and push. Um, me updated comments to reflect new style, or something like that. Some message that would be nice and easy here. I'm going to say commit and push again. This will give us two changes now shown on my graph. So we can see here I'm kind of getting further and further ahead of master. OK, so now I say, well, I'm ready to, to kind of sign off on this. I want this merged back into master. I want everyone on my team to start working with this. I'm, I'm going to need to first get those changes that my teammate had made. I'm going to need to get this. Well, in fact, it's not yet showing here. So what I need to do is I'm going to first do a git pull. So I'm going to do update project, um, which is another fancy way of me just doing, say, a git pull. I could do that down here if I wanted. Update project. I'll click OK. And now the graph is updated. So wait, hang on. We realize something else has happened. So here's the master. My origin master is now down here. It is ahead. Or it is off to the side here. I've got some changes that I have not yet pulled in for me. So I want to first make sure before I do any of these commits that I've got no changes currently pending. Otherwise, it's going to get kind of conflicted about my changes versus merge changes. And I'm going to want to um, merge this master branch to my feature branch. I'll go back to GitLab and show you that again. So here's this master branch kind of coming up here, the straight red line. I'm on my own branch on the side here. This is my 42 my change branch. I need to merge whatever's on master back into my branch in order to ensure that when I do my merge request, everything merges smoothly. So I can do that via uh, Android Studio quite nicely. I can go to Version Control System, VCS. Under Git, I can select Merge Changes. Now importantly, I am on this 42 My Change branch, so I am on my feature branch. Uh, and it'll show me here, current branch is this. I then want to select what it is I wish to merge. And I'm going to say, well, let's pull in the um, master. So origin master. And I'll say merge. Now, because of the changes that have been made here, it can't do it without conflict. If there was no conflict, this would happen just smoothly. Nothing would you see here. You just get the changes. But I need to actually pull in uh, or do some work to get those changes. So I'm going to say merge. And it brings up my three-way diff. So on the left-hand side is my local changes. So this is my code. In the middle is the most recent version that me and the master share. So this is kind of what, we, uh, what I forked off from, or branched from. And on the right-hand side, it's showing what is currently on the server. And so we've got here some highlighted things that need to be resolved. So at the top here, I've got my changes. Uh, the teammate had made some changes here. So I can say, well, I want to take my code my comments, and I'm going to forget about that. So I'm not going to take their, their changes. And I go through this whole process, figuring what I want to take, what do I want to take from them. So I want my min function, so I'll take that. I want my guard here. That sounds good. Um, inside of the average function, they had refactored the code, so I'll take that. Yeah, I like their refactoring. I'll take it. They've added a max function. That sounds good. And then down here, we get some more conflicts. So I wanted to switch it to, from a while loop to a for each loop, and they chose to go to a for loop. So I'm going to go take my for each loop into here, and I'm going to say, no, I don't need their refactoring, so I'll forget it. And we've both decided to remove this I++, so I'll get rid of that here. 
And then the last couple things to do is, well, down here they've got a few extra changes, so I'm going to pull that in. And I've got an issue here about we've changed the printout. We've each changed the printout, so I'm going to take both of them. And can I stretch this? No, I can't. Anyway, I'll, I'll apply that. And let's go down here and I'll do a quick edit. I realize maybe my code need to change some things. So I'll reorganize some of this code and then say, well, we want the average and I want my printout to display the, ma the min then the max. So maybe I'll go through and refactor the code, um, correct any bugs. At this point, having done the merge, I would make sure the whole thing builds. So you go to build my project, make the project. If I had any tests, I'd run the tests. I'd certainly want to do kind of a smoke test to prove that it's sort of the big features still work. I don't think I've broken anything. Any of the specific stuff I was merging here, I'd double check that it was doing fine as well. Okay, so I would now have done that merge in, uh, resolved any of the conflicts, and uh, if I look at the changes, of course, I have some changes, so I need to commit them. So I'm going to do a version control, commit changes. Because I did a merge, it's smart enough to know kind of what happened, and it gives me this suggestion of, well, you probably want the comment to be merged remote tracking branch remote origin master into the uh, 42 my changes. So yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to commit and push. And now it says, well, on my branch, I didn't previously have the stuff from them, I didn't have their merge, and I didn't have my latest merge. So all of these have been added to the 42 my change branch. I say, yeah, okay, that's kind of what I expected. I'll push that in. Um, well, some ID error, I don't care about that. Let's see here, if I refresh the online version, what do we have? Well, now we can see that I've got this merge arrow here. This is the latest thing I did, is from the master coming up into my feature branch is uh, the latest merge I just did. So that's looking pretty good. I now know I've got the latest stuff in the game. So I need to kind of convince my team that yes, this is good stuff, let's pull it in. Let's merge it into um, the main line, into the master. So I need to submit a merge request. So to do that, I'm going to go to my merge requests in GitLab. I could say new merge request here and do it manually, but it tells me, well, hey, you just pushed to this branch here. This is a branch I want. Do you want to merge that? So I'll say create merge request. And it fills in most of the stuff for me. Um, by naming here, I've named it to kind of fake it that it would be closing down an issue. I don't actually have an associated issue with this based on my scripts, but it would normally be closing that issue for me which is fantastic. As I go through this, I say, oh, well, what do I want to do? I might assign this to my, uh, if I've got a person in charge of it, like a repository manager, assign it to that person so that they are then uh, kind of, it highlights to them that they need to do some work. And we want to just make sure source is the 42 my change, target is master, sounds good. And I want to remove this, uh, this branch when I'm done. Now, if you forget to click this, there's ways to handle that afterwards. I'll see the next video. So I'll submit the merge request saying, okay, it's ready to go. Right now, it comes through and it says, okay, it's acceptable in the sense that there's no conflicts. If there were conflicts, um, we could go back and resolve those conflicts, but since we just did the merge, it should be good. Um, as time progresses, though, this might actually generate some conflicts. Uh, again, see the next video for how to resolve those. So at this point, I'd say, okay, I'm done. I, I've created my merge request. It's now up to somebody else's hands to go through and, and look at that. So later, my repository manager or somebody else on the team would come in and say, well, let's have a look at these changes. So they come in and say, well, there's three commits on this. They could go through and look what was up on that. Uh, here's the two things I actually did, plus there's that merging that happened. I can look at the changes that happened, and I can go through and see all the code changes uh, that I put in place. My teammates would go through and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. At the end of the day, they'd say they think they like it, and they will accept it for me. So um, so they go through, and they're going to uh, accept the merge. So after they've accepted the merge request, let's go back and see what it looks like now online, repository network. And now we can see it kind of looks pretty good. We've got this sort of continuous straight line here for my master. There was the them branch that came back in here. And then there was the my stuff, the me stuff that had happened. 
And I've got this merge that pulled from the them, or whatever changes from master there were, pulling it onto my feature branch. And the last thing is I merged my feature branch onto master. So that's kind of what I want it to look like. Now the one last thing I need to do is go back to Android Studio and kind of clean up where I was. So at the moment, Android Studio is working on kind of old uh, data from the repository. It doesn't yet have the new data from, and, uh, from um, the remote repository. So here, I'm going to start by just saying, well, what happens if I do a git pull? Or an update project. And this is going to fail because it tells me here pruned obsolete reference, a remote reference to origin slash 42 my change. So the hint here is that, well, you can't do a pull from it because it no longer exists. That branch is no longer uh, found. So if I go down here, I see, well, I'm on this branch, which has been removed. So I'm going to switch back to master. I should do this as soon as I know I've submitted my merge request. So I'm going to check out master. It gives me a suggestion here, well, is maybe there's a problem. Uh, your local changes to the following files will be overwritten. I say, okay, let's, let's cancel this. I don't want to do the smart checkout. I don't want to do any of this stuff. Let's just cancel that. Let's see where I'm at. So my changes here, I've got something. Let's have a look. Uh, show diff. Oh, and this one thing I didn't actually commit. I didn't commit my change that I did after editing it. So I say, oh, maybe I should go back and commit that. I could push that. I might say, well, let's just, let's just leave that. Maybe I didn't need to do that. So I'm going to say, well, let's revert that. By reverting, it's going to say, well, whatever changes I had, get rid of them. Clean it up. Whenever you're switching between branches, it's best if you've committed everything. You're not necessary, but it's best if the local changes is empty when you switch from one branch to another. So now let me try that again. I'm going to switch to this. I'm going to say check out. I am now on master. And so now when I go to version control, I can say refresh or update project. OK. And it correctly updated the project. I am still on master, as expected. And if I go to the log, it'll show me a, a graph that is equivalent, I should say, to what is found uh, in the online tool. Uh, it doesn't look quite as good because it sort of shows sort of where things are going around, a bit more uh, all, all over the place. But fundamentally, it shows, well, this is where master now is. All of my changes that I did, this, these two me things, again, I wouldn't start it with me normally, but it just highlights it. These two have now been checked in and committed to, and I suppose merged with master. Now there's one last thing I want to do is if I click down here, it shows me that this 42 my change, it no longer has that arrow that it used to have beside it. So it started off by having a little kind of uh, uh, minus greater than and telling me that it was sort of following or tracking a repository or a, um, a branch on the remote repository. That's gone, indicating that it's no longer tracking anything. The branch on the remote repository is gone. So here I say, well, I no longer need this because it's been merged in. I'm going to say delete. Uh, I get, I've kept it around this long in case there was some problem with my merge request that my group maybe wanted me to do a change. Um, so now I could go and check it out again if I needed to. But here I'm done with it, so I'm going to say delete. And that cleans it up. It removed it here. And so I'm no longer showing any sort of spurious um, branches uh, in my log here. And just as a final thing, let's do a quick check online to make sure that, yes, everything is as it should be. Here it is. I'm back on master. All my changes have been merged into master. Okay, thank you very much for watching.